What we're going to look at pretty briefly here, we're not going to go into a lot of detail on this. Um, this can actually be pretty extensive discussion. We're going to kind of keep things simple here, talking about Vesper, uh, which is valence shell electron pair repulsion. And this is talking about the shape or the geometry of molecules. And basically what it is is those groups of electrons around an atom are going to try to get as far apart from one another as possible. So our first example is going to be fairly simple. We're going to look at two groups around the central atom. So right here in the middle, this is our carbon that is what we call the central atom. And we see there are two groups attached to it. Those are actually the oxygens. And the way that these two groups can get as far apart from one another as possible is to be 180 degrees from one another. Because if this value were greater than 180, then that means the angle along the bottom will be less than 180. So they'd start being closer together on the other side of the molecule. So when we have a group that's one central atom, which we indicate with the abbreviation A, and two bonding groups, so B2, what we call that is a linear geometry. When we get to three groups, notice that we have three groups, two are single bonds, one is a double bond, that doesn't matter, we're just worried about the total number of groups. So we have one double bond, that counts as one group, a single bond, which is a second group, and another single bond, which is a third group. And so we use the, the abbreviation A to represent our central atom, in this case that's carbon, B represents three bonding groups, so A, B, 3, and any time we have this form, A, B, 3, we see that our geometry is trigonal planar. So our bond angles are 120 degrees from one another, because that's how the groups can get as far apart from one another as possible. Next we go to four groups, which we call tetrahedral, and this one's a little bit different. We like to think that these angles would be 90 degrees, but they're not, because we need to remember that these molecules are three-dimensional, and so we have our A, our central atom, and we have four bonding groups attached, and when we have those four bonding groups, what we get is an angle of 109.5 degrees. So when you're looking at tetrahedral, it's a little bit hard to think about, because we're used to thinking about 90-degree angles or 120-degree angles. 109.5 is this odd angle. We just don't know how to picture it as well in our head. So I do have models available both in the classroom, in my office. There are also model sets available in the Gen Chem Learning Center. So you can actually build these molecules, rotate it, and see how they look. I'll also provide a link to an online 3D model that you can virtually rotate and see what these molecules look like as well. And so anytime we have these four groups around the central atom, we have a tetrahedral geometry. Now there are actually geometries that talk about having five and six groups, which we are not going to worry about. If you had high school chemistry, you may have seen those, but when we look at molecules in the body, these biological molecules, we're only really going to see up to tetrahedral, so that's where we're going to be focusing with two, three, and four groups around that central atom. Now the examples we've already looked at all had bonding groups. There weren't any lone pairs around those um, central atoms. So it looks something like what we see here for methane or CH4. And what we see is we have our central atom A and four bonding groups. And in that case, our bond angle, which we saw before, was 109.5. So that's the angle formed by hydrogen, carbon to hydrogen. So even though it's shown here and it looks like it's planar in 90 degrees, this molecule exists in three dimensions. It is not a planar molecule. When we look at structures that then start replacing one of those bonding groups with a lone pair, so ammonia or NH3 is an example of that. In this case we have our central atom A, we have three bonding groups to the hydrogens, and we have N which is a non-bonding group or lone pair. What we start to see is that the angle, so the angle between the hydrogen to the nitrogen to the hydrogen, actually gets compressed a little bit. So imagine that this lone pair here is basically taking up more more space and it starts to push these angles, push these atoms closer together so that the actual angle is slightly less than the idea. I'm not worried about you memorizing a specific number, just know that this angle is slightly less than the ideal. 
when we go to water, we still have our four groups around the central atom. And in all of these, we're looking still at tetrahedral geometry. But when we go to water, we see we have our central atom A. We have two bonding groups and two non-bonding groups. And those non-bonding groups are these two lone pairs on the oxygen. So we're looking at the oxygen. There are four groups around that atom, around that central atom. And as a result, we see our geometry or our angle is now a little bit less, 104.5. We saw in the NH3 that we could think about those electrons, that lone pair or non-bonding pair of electrons taking up more space and compressing these angles. We see the same thing happening with our water molecule, only now there are two lone pairs of electrons and they compress this angle even more. So we see the angle gets even smaller than what we saw with the NH3. Again, no need to memorize a specific value, just know that it gets smaller. So these pictures show the same uh, molecules, but instead of drawing them in the Lewis structure form, we're using the ball and stick model. And so it's a little bit easier to see the angles that are present. So when we talk about that 109.5, we're referring to this angle. Our 107 is the angle here between our hydrogen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. And then we look at water, and we're looking at this angle here the HOH angle, which is a little bit smaller than what we saw in NH3 and smaller than we saw in the AB4. In this case, we're looking at something like methane.